Okay, we're recording. Let's start by um, looking at the uh, looking at the course website. I'd like to go down, look at where we are in the calendar. Look at that, May fifth. <coughs> Only one more class left, and what are we going to talk about today? Container component architecture, right on time. That actually is fairly rare for me. May 7th, Thursday, we're going to do the review for the final exam. If you go up here and click on final exam review, you see the, uh, the um, you'll see all of the information about the final exam. For example, the time of the final exam, which is actually pretty soon, isn't it? A week from tomorrow, I, I reckon. So, uh, and then you'll see a review of the topics that we covered for the final exam. This is mostly post midterm. You click on this midterm link. There's the review for the midterm, the midterms for the two different sections. You should take the midterm for the other section, administer it to yourself, compare it to the posted solutions, see how you would have done. Um, yeah, so if you read through uh, the uh, getting lots of questions about format and stuff like that. So if you read through this overview, you'll find that yes, it's going to be the same format as the midterm. And then uh, down here, sample problems. Oh, this link is bad. But so I've been busy thinking of lots and lots of samples problems for you to do. Um, and so that would be you know, maybe a good study guide for the final exam. That's what we're so so you can read through and get a lot of your questions answered right away by reading through that. And then that'll sort of form the basis of uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday's lecture. The um, assignments so today uh, we're talking about, did I just click? Assignments, today we're uh, talking about Smartbox now. Um, the other class um, badgered me into delaying the due date of Smartbox. So Smartbox is now due Friday at 5 p.m. The idea is to give you one last shot at an office hour before this is due. So, um, so uh, let's do uh, a quick review of what we did last time with Smartbox. So Smartbox is meant to, to teach you about container component architectures, but also it's a sneaky way of like getting you to learn about Java Reflection. Java Reflection was actually developed um, for this exact purpose. So, <clears throat> so here we have some guy, this app builder guy. He is, uh, CBD stands for Component, component Based Development. This app builder guy, um, he is charged with um, building like an enterprise solution for some large company. Um, you know, maybe uh, the company could be uh, Target or somebody like that, some Fortune 500 company. They have lots of uh, components to their enterprise software. You know, they've got a human resources component. They've got like a payroll component, inventory management, warehouse control, shipping, uh, e-store, you know, lots and lots of different uh, pieces. And all those pieces have to be able to talk to each other. And uh, that traditionally has been like a diff difficult um, task. But then, you know, you've had, you know, these companies uh, come along like, uh, like Salesforce, for example, and they provide a container. Uh, so that's the job of the container developer is to build a container. And then they have component developers who 
And these could be component developers who work at Salesforce, uh, let's see some examples here, um, who work at Salesforce, or they could be third, I don't know, third, if Salesforce allows this, but they could be third party developers um, as well. Um, who build these components, like here's a payroll component, here's an e-store component, a banking component, uh, an accounting component, whatever. And then, so this app builder, you know, gets the container from this guy, buys some components from this guy, and then he drops these components into the container, you know, and the container takes care of the formally very difficult job of uh, getting the components to talk to each other. And that was, uh, that was the, uh, the challenge. But so this typically, this app builder is gonna be somebody with uh, an MIS background, management and information sciences, uh, um, and information technology background, somebody, uh, somebody like that. Okay, and, and really like the point of all of this is that this app builder guy does not need to waste four years of his life getting a degree in computer science like you're doing, right? Because he can program, right? Just by dropping components into a container, right? He doesn't have to like know about Java, you know, stuff, know about object-oriented design, stuff like that. That's why we call it sometimes component-oriented design or component-based design or development. And he just needs to drop components in a container. And then the app launcher here, this is the guy who's going to run some of these applications that the app builder built. Right? So maybe this is some guy, some uh, salesman out in the field or something like that. So that's the story here. And toward that end, we built SmartBox, which is like shows off all of the features that I just described. We went through this example last time. Uh, so we are now uh, an app builder guy, right? And we've got this calculator component from somebody that implements this iCalculator interface. It's a component because it extends the component class. Somebody else. Uh, we obtained a stats calculator component, uh, but he uses an I calculator. So he has this association arrow as a something that implements I calculator. But what? He doesn't know what he implements it. And this guy also implements the app interface. App interface just has one method in it. Uh, public void main throws exception. This is not the main in Java. That's a static method. This is just what SmartBox calls like a, a starting point for you know, a component. Here's the same diagram, same picture, same code, but shown using a UML component diagram. We could have an interface like this. We just draw the component diagram and it builds the application. Calculator provides the iCalculator interface. Stats calculator component requires or uses it. So we have this as a little ball and socket kind of connection there. And then, you know, we can demonstrate that. Let's see. Um, here is that. So over here, uh, I've got my um, got my MVC apps here. If I open that up, here is um, here's MVC that's in here. The MVC package, and then. Then we also have here, like all of these other packages are different customizations that we've had, right? Um, here's SimStation as a customization, and here's SmartBox. If I had SmartBox up, you know, here we have, you know, all of the container class, component class, the container class, the container panel, um, 
I made a mistake, add component. I mean, this should have been add command, but um, for some reason I gave it the name add component, remove component, run component. Those are my command classes and so forth. Here's the app interface, quick look at it. That's all it is. Okay, and then here are the, uh, this is a, uh, a sub package, although it's not inside of Smartbox, so it's a little confusing, but that's the way Eclipse does it. And uh, let's take a quick look at it. First of all, here's the iCalculator interface. Okay, add, mole, subtract, divide. Here's calculator, which uh, extends, let's see, extends component, but implements iCalculator. And when you look at this code, you put on your component developer hat and you're asking yourself the question, well, how hard is it to create a component? Well, as you can see, it's pretty easy. All you really need to say is extends component, right? But the other stuff implements iCalculator and implementing these methods, that's stuff you'd have to do anyway, right? We're not gonna implement your methods for you, right? Um, and then uh, let's take a look at um, stats calculator. Stats calculator, so you have to say extends components and implements app, which means that you know, it's common in that code here. Here's main, you're implementing main, and what does main do? It creates a list of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 99 calculates the mean of those numbers and pops up a dialog box showing what that mean is. Okay, here is the mean method. It uses something called an arithmetic calculator to add and an arithmetic calculator to divide. This junk here. An arithmetic calculator, I don't know what that is. All I can tell you is that, well, it's something that implements the iCalculator interface. But there's, if you look through this, there's no reference to calculator at all, just to this interface. So pretty easy job for the component developer. And then we start it up. I think it's in container panels where the run method is. All right, I'm gonna click on add. I mean, we can do it from here, add, um, run, what, I think I'm not sharing this with you, am I? Uh. Starts. So let's start all over on this. What am I sharing? I'm sharing. I don't know what I'm sharing with you at this point. Okay. So I go to container panel, run as Java application, do a new share. Pops up this window, add calculator. Edit menu, add stats calculator. Run stats calculator. pops up this dialog box showing what the average of the numbers from zero to 99 are. Okay. So, um, and this is the code, we just looked at the code. Um, 
And then the design, here's the basic design of the smart box. Here's the container here. And container extends MVC's model class. The container has a bunch of components. Every component has a reference back to the container. So it's a bi-directional association. The components are serializable. The component has these two sets here. It has a set of provided interfaces and a set of required interfaces. Interfaces are being represented by objects in Java's class class. So that's a reflection thing right there. Okay. Um, you can tell a class is an interface by calling it uh, is interface method if it returns true. So interfaces, just a picture in your mind that this is interface here rather than class. So a set of provided interfaces, a set of required interfaces, and he's got like a, a bunch of fields here too. Uh, this is going to be a field. A field is also Java reflection. And these are objects representing the fields of this component. And here's the app interface. Okay, and then come down here, take a quick look at component.java, implement serializable. And then here we have the required interfaces. This is a set of interfaces, classes. Provide, these are the interfaces that, so the required interfaces, the interfaces it needs other components to implement. Provided interfaces, these are the interfaces it will implement. And then fields here is actually a table. So I have a map here. Map is like a, a two column table. Okay, column one is uh, an interface. Again, use class here. Okay, and then column two is the field that has that interface as its type. There's a reference to the container, and here's the name of the component. Okay, there's some code here that needs to be polished up here. Basically, you know, what you've got to do is you, when you construct a component, right, you need to compute what are the required interfaces that'll you fill up the required interfaces set and then compute provide, and I think compute required interfaces also initializes the fields. And then compute provided interfaces fills up the provided interfaces table. And, and I don't know who the container is at this point. And the name of the component is the simple name, the un, 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 without the package prefix. And then let's look, container panel is completed, so you shouldn't need to change that. And then here's the container class. So container extends model. And what it's got, it's got three tables in it. Okay, so the first table are the provide, the table of provided interfaces. So this is the interface and the associated component component that provides it. So it has this table. Here are the interfaces that components provide, and each interface is associated with the component that provides it. Um, required interface, same deal. This is a table. Column one is the interface. Column two is the component that, that needs that interface implemented. And then finally, the components table, this is a column one is the name of the component and then the component itself. And we need this because what's coming to us from the user interface, just the names of these components. And we have to be able to translate that into the actual component itself. So when you uh, click add component, you create the add command and you execute the add command, it calls this method. Okay, and this method uh, uses reflection to create the components. And then it calls this private add component. 
who's going to basically add the component, the actual component to the container. So I've divided it in two steps. Public step, which is given the name, create the component. And then the private step, which is now that we have the component, let's add the component to the container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in demos here. He added this smart box hints link. And I'm going to take you, step you through this code for what we just did. The first thing I did was I added the calculator to the smart box container. So here we're going to assume that container refers to an instance of the container class. And I called add and I just gave it the name calculator, the string calculator. Okay. So what it did was it figured, well, it actually must mean, this is probably the qualified name of it. So, so one of the requirements, the great simplifying requirements of Smartbox is that um, all of the component classes have to live in the component sub-package of the Smartbox package, okay? Uh, it's not such a weird uh, or you know, difficult requirement. You know, a lot of containers like uh, Tomcat and JBoss and things like that, they have the same requirement. The, the, uh, and I think also Eclipse has this requirement too. The components have to be deployed to a particular directory somewhere in order for the container to, to find them. Okay, so, so uh, that's where I'm gonna look for it. And class.foreign name, so we use this kind of code exactly in echo server, the echo server. The echo server uh, in, um, what was it? Um, uh, make a uh, request handler method, right? So all we had, all we got from the command line there is just the name of the request handler class, math handler, uh, casino handler, or whatever it was, right? And from that name, we had to actually create like an instance of the handler class. So you can just look at that code and copy it. Right, this thing will go find a file called smartbox.component.calculator.class. It'll load it into um, the Java virtual machine and it'll return an object representing the class of that class, C. And then from C, it can create a new instance and let's call that new instance calc, the calculator. And then it calls the private method container.addCalc. Okay, so now we're going to jump into container.addCalc. Step one, he's going to put a new row in the components table. This is a row that associates the string, the name calculator, with the calc object. And then in the provided interfaces table, he's going to put the interface I calculator associated with the calc component. Okay, now how does it know that? Um, well, let's go back to here for a second and take a look. I'll tell you how humans would know it. The way a human would know it is he would look at what interfaces calculator implements. Okay, and uh, so since calculator implements I calculator, I know the calculator provides that, is a provider for that interface. Of course, the way that the container does it is it uses reflection to figure that out. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we've just made two entries in the table. Let's draw, see if I can draw a little picture of this for you. Um, I'm going to draw it right sideways here. I'm 
drawing, so I'll be back in a minute. Struggling penmanship. Let's see if this works. Speaker view. I can never see myself on speaker view. Right. Need somebody else and a speaker view for me. Uh, so inside the container class, I've got these three tables. This table here is. I wonder if I turn off the light. <laughs> Now that light, I think, is coming from me. I have to close the curtain to get rid of that. Oh, no, the light's coming from the computer screen itself. OK, so we've got three tables. This is the components table, a two-column table. This is the required interfaces table. And this last one here is the provided interfaces table. So what happened is in this table, we have the string calculator is associated with the calc component. Now the calculator component doesn't require anything. So this table is empty, but it does provide the iCalc interface. So here we have iCalculator as the interface and calc is the component that provides it. Here's this. Um, so then the next thing I did was I added the stats calculator. So here we have container.add stats calculator, just the string. So again, class.forename of here's the qualified name. Okay, and that's going to return an object representing the class. I can use that object to create a new instance, and let's call that guy stats for stats calculator. Next, I call the private container.add stats. We skip down here. So in the components table, there's going to be a new entry, a new row, string stats calculator maps to stats. Uh, in the required interfaces, well, uh, I calculator is required by stats. So that is put in here. Now, how did it know that? How did it know that? Well, uh, let's take a look at the, how humans would know it. Well, as a human looking through this code, I notice that there's a field up here called arithmetic calculator. Uh, and all it says is a type I calculator, but it doesn't tell us anything about um, what actual component implements that. So I look through the code, you know, there's no mention anywhere in there of how uh, arithmetic calculator gets actually uh, instantiated, you know, what it points at, right? It's just this empty field, right? Uh, and so, uh, so in order for this, I'm reasoning now as a programmer, as a human staring at this code, before this code can run, somebody is going to have to initialize arithmetic calculator because it's not initialized here. Okay, so, so in order for stats calculator run, somebody needs to come along and implement the iCalculator interface. 
So iCalculator is a required interface for stats calculator. He can do calculate mean for you, but first you need to give it an arithmetic calculator to do this work. The, uh, of course, it's not a human that's looking at this, but it's gonna be our container looking at this code, right? And the way the container tells can tell is, well, arithmetic calculator is a field of stats calculator. The type of that field is an interface. And also another hint here is that I think is necessary is that this field is public. Okay, so we're gonna guess that uh, that's a required interface. It could be that there's a constructor that initialize arithmetic calculator somewhere. We can't look inside of the constructor. We're not that smart. So, uh, but I think it'll still work fine, you know, even if that, even if that happens. But, but our guess here is that iCalculator is, is required by app. Okay, and so iCalculator maps to stats, and so I'll add and put that in a little, um, little art effort here. Okay. So, here is where we are now. Again, these are closer to me. Again, these are our three tables inside the container. So here in the components, we've got a new row. The name statistics calculator is associated with this stats object. Here we have in required, I calculator is required by stats. And then down here in provided, I calculator does, um, stats calculator doesn't implement anything. So uh, then uh, here we still have I calculator is provided by calc. Okay, so now what's going to happen is we're going to call. Uh, we're going to call finds, well, finds, find providers method. And what find providers method is going to do is it's going to say, oh, uh, iCalc requires, um, so iCalc is required by somebody. And then it'll go down here and it'll say, is anybody here provide that? Yes, calculator does. And so then it'll take these two guys and it'll connect them, and I'll show you how in a minute. So here we are in fine providers. So uh, just a quick look at the code for fine providers, which I think I've given to you. So find providers here uh, basically uh, calls required. This is the required interfaces table dot key set. That's column, the entirety of column one, everything that's in column one. And that's going to return a set of interfaces. These are all of the interfaces required by any component the container knows about. And now I'm going to iterate through those interfaces. Now, in our example, there's only one interface, which is iCalculator. So iCalculator is the only thing that's in there. Okay, so we're going to go to the required interfaces table dot get of iCalculator. We're asking, does anybody need to have this uh, implemented? And this is going to return stats. Okay, the statistics, that's what I'm calling the stats calculator components is my shorthand name for it. Okay, so somebody does need that. So he goes over to the provided interfaces table 
is there anybody, and he uses get again, is there anybody who can provide this? And this is going to say calc. And here's how they're going to, here's how a human would hook it up. Stats.arithmetic calculator equals calc. There you go, you're connected. Okay, how is it done in code? Right here. Right, so client dot set provider. Here is the interface, and here is the provider. That is here. It's kind of cool code. Again, it makes our lives kind of easy. Um, can I get all of that on Jim? Right. It's uh, this line right here. So we, we look up the field that has the type I calculator, and then we do field.set. So this is the implicit object, and provider is the provider. So this is all being done in reflection. And what you would normally have done, what, you know, instead of doing this, which is what a, a programmer would do. Now we call this find providers each time a component is added to the container. We try to like hook everybody up. We don't want to have to go through this again for stats calculator. So down here, we're going to remove that row uh, I calculator implemented by uh, required by stats calculator. We're going to remove that row from the table. Okay, so the next time somebody adds something, you know, we don't have to. Once again, reintroduce stats calculator to calculator. They've already been, they've already been married up, so they don't need to get married a second time. Okay, so um, right. So that's it. Uh, I guess the other part of this, like if you go back to the container class. Just see what you have to do here. Um, so this part right here, again, you're going to copy what you did in Echo and add component. You have to create a new instance of some class somehow. Okay, and then here, uh, in add component, the private add component, I set the container. I put in the components table. Here's the name of the newly added component, and here's the component itself. And then I'm going to update the provided interfaces table. So provided interfaces dot put. This is for every interface that the component provides. So component dot get provided interfaces. So for each one of those interfaces, in the provided interfaces table, I will put this interface is provided by or implemented by this component. Now for required, so now here you have to up, do the same thing for required interfaces table. So that's going to be your job, right? And that's just going to be basically copy this. It'll be very similar to this, but required instead of provided. Okay, then find providers, and then I call change. This will update that list that you see in the control panel. I'll remove component, you don't need to worry about. Find providers, I want you to understand this code, but you know, it's already implemented. And then launch. Okay, so here is the name, stats calculator. Okay, so we'll look it up in the components table. You've got the name. So you can do components.get and it'll tell you the component. Okay, now two things you want to check here. One, um, is there actually a component with this name? Okay, uh, in this case, when you the get will return null and you should throw an exception and something like um, you know component not found component with this name not found 
A second thing, it did find a component, but that component doesn't implement the app interface. In other words, it doesn't have a main method. So again, you'd want to throw an exception saying uh, only apps can be run. And then finally here, you would just call whatever the component was, you just call component.name and away you go. Mm. Let's see, so um, let's take a quick look at the apps interface. By the way, you can ask these questions in public unless you're embarrassed. Um, oh, let's see, I think I have to do this. I'm going to show you the apps interface and you're not going to be that enlightened by it. Let's That's it for the app interface. It just says, thou shalt have a method called main. Okay, this is not a main, Java's main, because that's static. It has an array of strings as a parameter. And also, this one throws an exception if something goes wrong. Okay, so this is just to guarantee, just to help us know I mean, you might have lots of components, but which one is the one that we launch the application from? Right? So our convention is, well, it's the one. Otherwise, you know, if you said launch a component, you'd have to then ask, well, what method do you want us to call in that component? Okay, um, are there, so here's where I'm, I'm hoping you are right now, um, at least in terms of workflow. Um, I'm hoping that you've implemented the smart box and that you're, uh, successfully been able to run the calculator example, okay? Or maybe you're not quite there yet in your workflow, but by some time today, you will have finished that. If you're not there, then in my estimation, you are running behind. And this is a, an easy, I think it's 5%, so it'd be like an easy way to bolster your grades. You want to lose this 5%. Um, can I answer other questions about implementing SmartBox? Uh. All right. Um, oh, here we're getting something in here. Should I go over the launch and let's see, here's what I can do. Um, I want to give you the code for launching, but, um, let's do this. So when the user clicks run button, says, what do you want to run? You know, and, and they're going to type in stats calculator. And that's going to call that's going to call Now we're inside of launch. Okay. Um, so all we have is the name of the calculator um, of the stat, the name of the component stats calculator. How do we get from the name to the actual component that's in there? So think about that for 12 seconds. 
Given the name stats calculator, how would you locate the object stats calculator? Okay, 12 seconds are up. So the answer is, well, that's what the components table is for. Components, remember, is a table that associate has a list of all of the components indexed by their names. Right? And so you can look it up. Okay. Now, next you'd want to want to do some error checking here. Okay, uh, and the two kinds of things that you want to watch out for here. One is that calc might be null. Maybe we haven't added it yet. Okay. Um, so um, let's change its name, not calc, but let's call it stats. I think that's what I was calling it in the page. Stats could be null, and you might want to throw an exception. Is how you throw an exception. Bad. The other thing that you want to check is that does stats implement the app interface? Okay. And then finally, you want to call stats.main. And I haven't tried this out yet, but you might need to you might need to cast it first. And of course, dot is higher precedence than casting. So you might need like an extra set of parentheses like that. Okay. Okay, let's move on then to customization of this that I'd like you to do. In fact, let me see if I can just do the customization for you. Um, or demo it for you, I mean, not do it for you. Where is it? So here I'm going to add a new component to all call console. I'm going to add a, um, a new component called, I think it's called stack machine. This is funny. Got this problem last time too. Mm -hmm. Just try one other thing. Stacks. Was it really called Stack Machine? Let me just maybe I'm giving it the wrong name. The stack Machine. Okay, there's stack machine. It should be order independent. So I might have some little bug in my code somewhere where the order matters. Okay, and now I'm gonna click run, and I wanna run console. Now I'm gonna go over to um, clips. And you see this little arrow here? That's the console running. So let's push three. This is a stack machine. Push five. Push seven. Now. R 
start hour again. And so three, five, and seven, that's what the stack looks like right now. Let's go back to action here. And now I'm going to do mole. It just says done. Where's my answer? We'll have to type in top. What's on top of the stack? And there, 35. So what's happened here is What's happened here is uh, the mole operation is replaced the top two elements on the stack by their product. And here I could do maybe subtract. Now it's on top of the stack, 32, 35. Minus two is minus three is 32. I could pop it off the stack. Now it's on top of the stack, nothing. And now I could quit. It says bye. Okay. So um, let's see. Where should I go? Let's go to the Question coming in, maybe. Yeah, well, your problem there, uh, Lynn, is that you've got the right parentheses in the wrong place. The right parentheses need to go before the uh, before the dot. Um, <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, so let's go through that little uh, exercise and see what you need. This is the customization I want you to complete to test your, uh, your component, your, your smart box. So console.java. So this is a component that I partially created, right? This is a simple user interface component. It's totally reusable. So like everything else that we've learned this semester, Reusability is king. Okay, so class console. Okay, and then this is some stuff you have to figure out what to fill in here. Okay, um, here I've got some readers and writers, and then here I've got a processor. And a processor, I should let me start with a different class. Let's look at command processor. Command processor is an interface. And this is an interface implemented by components that know how to execute things, right? So it's got execute, you give it a command to execute, and it'll either execute the command and return the result, or if there's a problem, it'll throw an exception. And so coming back to command console, hint, this is command processor here. So processor is some kind of a command processor. What kind of a command processor? We don't know. But in order for this class to work, somebody's going to have to give us a command processor. Next, I initialize standard input, standard error, standard out. Um, some people wonder why I make a distinction between standard in and standard error. It's like a kind of a Unix, an old Unix thing. Um, 
you know, in Unix, uh, you can do this kind of a thing. Um, this stuff. In Unix, you might do something like cat um, my file. So here I'm going to generate a list of the contents of my file.txt. Instead of going to the console window, it's going to go into some application I've written called process. And then its output is going to go into be redirected into a different file. Uh, and um, and what sometimes happens here is that there is a bug in process. And so instead of getting the output you expected, you get a bunch of error messages. But you don't know about the error messages because they all got redirected into this file instead of the console. So in, in Unix systems, and I think it's true for you know, DOS as well, uh, that Redirect is only for standard output. If you put your error messages in standard error, the error messages go to the console window. I think this is it, some um, like a, um, some sort of like the seashell prompt or something like that. And so you see your error messages, they don't get buried into this file. So that's why I make two different. That's why I make two different um, two different streams for that. So these are my input and output streams. And REPL is my read execute print loop, which you've seen a bunch of times now. While true, try this. We print the prompt, we flush the output stream, we read in the command. If the command is no, we continue. If the command is quit, we break. Otherwise, we use the processor to execute this request. Okay, and here is the response. And now we're going to print out the response and go back and do it all over again. Okay. And then here's another hint for you main. So that tells you something about what interface this has to implement. Main uh, just calls REPL. Okay, here I created this stack machine. You don't need a math machine. You don't need this, but this is just an example of something that implements the command processor interface as an execute method. And you could actually use this to test your, uh, your application. And this is a misnomer. I'm, I should get, I'll get rid of that. So that's step one. Finish up command console. Command processors complete, math machine is complete. So you can just use that for testing. Step two, um, the stack machine. So let's look at this iStack interface. So iStack does the usual things that you'd expect, push, pop, top, et cetera. And then here is stack machine. The stack machine, there's some stuff here that you have to implement, that you have to write. And then this here is going to be iStack. That's going to be iStack. Put that in for you. So I need somebody that implements the iStack interface. And then here's execute. Now, uh, for example, uh, uh, here, I take this command and I parse it into an array of tokens. I like to use this guy here for split. That is a regular expression that means one or more white space characters. A white space character is a space, a tab, or a new line. So that by doing it that way, instead of insisting it has to be a single space, you let your user, give your user some freedom to format his code. Um, so here, for example, maybe token sub zero equals add. 
So I'm going to pop the stack, and I'll call that result. Get the top of the stack. That's a result. Pop that off of the stack. I get the top of the stack again and add that to result. Pop that off of the stack, and then I push the result back on, and my answer is going to be done, which is going to get returned at the end here. Okay, so it looks like all you really need to do is just fill in that stuff. Okay, and then finally there's stack. Stack is going to implement iStack, obviously. Okay, so, and this is all, I mean, there's nothing particularly container and component-ish about this. It's just a straightforward implementation. It's being backed by java.util.stack. Okay, now you might say, why didn't I just use, if Java already has this stack in it, why do I have to implement my own stack? Okay, and this is a great demo of the adapter pattern. Think about the adapter pattern. A class exists that provides the required functionality, push, pop, and top, but does not implement the required interface. Now here it's not an interface, but it's the component class. So we need a stack that extends component. Now, of course, you know, and the guys at, you know, you know, and the guys at Oracle, or actually it's probably the guys at uh, the guys at Sun you know, implemented this stack class. They didn't know anything about our silly little component class. So it, that stack class doesn't implement it. So we use the adapter pattern here. Our stack will extend component, but he will delegate to java.util stack. That's a perfect example of how you would use the adapter pattern. So you have to finish filling that in. It's not too much work a few lines of code here and there and then um and then you're done right uh, maybe um it'd be useful a few minutes left let's just sketch a quick um Maybe a quick class diagram that's mm, I wonder if this works. Maybe I already actually have it here. Yeah, actually do have it here already. So here's like a quick diagram of how this is going to work. Console. Yes. Can't manage these windows. This thing throws at me. So, um, so here you go. Here is a stack, stack machine, console. All three are components, and console also is an app. Console needs somebody uh, that implements the command processor interface, and the stack machine provides it. So. Command processor interface is required by console and provided by stack machine. iStack interface is provided by stack but required by stack machine. Okay, so that's what I need you to, to finish. Okay, um, so um, let's see. Um, maybe some questions. 
Anybody have questions? No? Okay, um, good. So then I will um, I'll see you in class Thursday. Friday will be office hours, Friday, 5 p.m. Your homework's due. Thursday, we'll do a review of the exam. Please read through that exam review that I posted. I'll see you in class.